Okie doke. All right, now let me open up. We'll do a little share screen in a second. Let's just go. All right. So um, yesterday we uh, we spent a little time uh, just talking about uh, the program and um, kind of a little bit about what Merlot is and um, and also about the um, the uh, open health systems um, laboratory. And uh, and the role that 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 you will be playing in the internship process, okay. And now what we're going to do is just go into a little bit more detail about um, how <clears throat> how you will become an active member in the Merlot community, um, how you will, and and part of becoming a an active member is you have to create your identity in the digital world, or create your profile, right? Um, so that other people can meet you, can know about you, you can contribute into the collection. And then I'm gonna show you a little bit about, you know, the different ways that that you can um, uh, use them, the tools that we have in Merlot to find some stuff. Um, and then the next part will be about how do you then, um, kind of begin to contribute into the collection. And we'll be talking a little bit about, you know, how do you begin to shape the persona that will be your focus for building the collection. So so those are the the basic goals that that we have for today. And um and just to remind you around um and you know Lydia pointed this out uh that Merlot is a community of people as well as a collection of resources. So um so what we're going to begin with today about becoming a member of that community, um, and then we'll talk about how do we begin to contribute to the building of the collection, right? And and there's a lot to this um, over time, and uh, and one of the sayings that that you know I gave you last, yesterday was um, all things are difficult until they become easy, and um, and in the beginning, sometimes there might be a little confusing. What do I do here? What do I do there? But with a little practice, you'll become um, an expert user. Um, and uh, and and one of the things we're, we're going to, again, talk about is when you're becoming a, a member and then when you start building a collection, um, you know, I talked about how you want to begin with identifying a persona. That means identify kind of um a uh an idea of a of a person who takes on a certain role um in their educational process and and here are again some examples here um you can say and this is probably pretty close to what you are right students interested in cancer research and you and wanting to understand what are the different types of cancers what's all out there what makes it different and so you might say, okay, how do I go look for materials to kind of expand someone's understanding of different types of cancers, right? And what distinguishes one another, right? So, so looking at that being a focus, you can begin to really explore a whole range of information. Now, another one might be, you know, thinking about, am I someone in a rural community in a developing country who sees a family member that's ill and how could I decide if it might be cancer, right? So you might think of a, like a, someone who's looking about how do I know some basic information? Um, and then how do I begin to think about a diagnostic process? What's information out there about warning signs, uh, about ways that there can be some indicators. And so something like that might be, well, for me to understand cancer, I have to know some basic things about biology, uh, about cell biology, about uh, DNA, RNA, things along those lines 
that can become very important um, in understanding the basics of uh, the underlying biology of cancer, right? So that then would be, you know, a different way you'd say, oh, this is really helpful. This was really helpful for me to understand these things. And when it's helpful for you, it's also going to be helpful for someone like you, because there's, if you remember, I said talent is equally distributed around the world, but opportunity is not. And you've had the opportunity to learn these things. And by your building out the library, you are then giving opportunity to many, many other people to learn what, what you've learned. Um, now, another example um, that you can think about is a um, if you're a pediatric nurse, just reassigned to a, a children's cancer unit, and now you have to educate the parents of the children about cancer, right? And, uh, and so this is where you might begin to look at, you know, how do you provide um, health care advice and education? So there's a whole nother area um, that's important for uh, the, the treatment of cancer. And that is the, I'll call it the psychological elements, um, the, the patient care um, about how people have to think about expectations. So if I'm going through chemotherapy, hmm, you know, what do I have to expect there? What do I need to know? How could I prepare? What, what do I have to do? So you can see, hopefully I'm just giving you some examples, how the different role that you can play, the persona that you can bring um, would then have you look for materials to put in, into the Merlot collection in different ways. So um, is, is that, was that helpful folks for you thinking about? And, you know, and one of them, you know, uh, can be about, I want to be um, a, um, you know, I, I want to do research about a particular type of cancer. And, um, and I want to look at, um, particular things about messenger RNA and how that um, can be, uh, how I can interfere with that with different types of custom uh, therapies or something along those lines. I'm just kind of giving you examples. So you have a choice and about how to, um, you know, how you want to pursue uh, looking for information and building that collection. And, and you don't have to do one for the entire month. You might want to say, well, maybe I'll start off thinking about as a pediatric nurse or and next week I might try to think about someone in role or whatever it might be. So, so as your interests change, you can bring up in a sense the different persona and then that enables you to kind of search for materials in a meaningful way. All right, so does that sound... Um, any any questions or comments that you have about that? Okay. So Alexander, you, you get that? You, you have an idea of what of what you might want to do? Okay. All right. So little, not too sure right now, but you know, I want to explore a little bit. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and and that's again um one of the things about research that it's never a linear process. It's not, oh, I do this, and then I do this, and then I do this, and then I'm done, right? So, so what often happens, you'll say, oh, well, let me begin with an idea about, you know, I want to be a student learning about many cancers. And then you start exploring, and then you say, oh, man, this is really cool about what are um, homeopathic treatments of cancer, right? that are, would be widely available. I don't need lots of technology. And you say, oh boy, I never thought about this. This could be really cool, right? And then, then you can say, now I can think about, maybe I'll, you know, I'll think about how can I be a healthcare worker um, in a um, developing country where we can help them in their cancer treatment with, um, with uh, existing uh, resources that they have available there, right? So, so there's always an interplay between what you want and what you're thinking about and what you are discovering in the in the research process. Okay? So 
and and that's what makes it fun all right so allow allow yourself to be shifted by what you learn it's um and and this is part of you know in in your career um you want to enable opportunities to shape your journey um and I, i'll give you you know my example you know i'm a uh i started off as a research psychologist right and um and so i was working in a lab doing experiments and all this other stuff and then technology was emerging this was in the 90s right probably when about you might have been born all right um and uh and the internet was exploding and so i got into technology and and that opportunity then brought me into doing a bunch of things and uh, and then i became the assistant vice chancellor for academic technology right never i never thought i would be any doing anything like that but it's allowing life and the opportunities to say oh that sounds pretty cool let me try that i didn't think about it but let, let me go for it. And, and that's what I want to, in this internship, for you to realize that allow yourself to discover what you're interested in and take those chances to move along. Okay? All right. All right, let's go uh, back with uh, share screen again. All right. All right. Now, um, I, I sent this URL to you, <clears throat> excuse me, um, earlier, but uh, um, all the things that I'm going to talk about today, um, you can always review. Uh, I, I put together a little website for you um, that has some of the basic stuff in it, what's Merlot. And, uh, and in here, we have these little um, YouTube videos that walk you through the process. And um, it's just, um, uh, um, and, and I'll say that we changed the UI a little bit you know, or the design a little bit from this, but the the process is is always the same here. Um, and, and so, you know, you, you can listen to some fun music and it kind of walks you through the process from becoming a member, how to search materials, um, and I'm going to walk through all these type of things uh, with you today. So just so you know, um, if you don't remember everything, don't worry about it. We have a bunch of tutorials um, that, that helps you find a lot of stuff. Okay? All right. Let's go back. All right. All right. So... Um, so one of the things we're 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 going to do, and and you know, I talked with uh, Davida from the uh, Summarize program, and uh, and because uh, many of you are under eighteen, um, she asked that you not use your full real name. Uh, she said if you just want to use your last name and your and your first initial, that's great, or you can choose another one, um, and and I'll show you about what you can make public and not, and then and then we'll go through. Um, um, how to really flesh out your um, your uh, member profile, okay? Okay, so so now we're gonna go have some fun. All right. Okay, and then the first thing I'll show you. So. Um, <clears throat> So here's Merlot, and and when you become a member, right? Um, your it's it will say hi Alexander, hi Alice, hi Lydia, hi, uh, um, your your first name there, what, whatever it is, okay. And so, um, and I'll show you, um, when you go to your name, you you can just click on profile. So what I'm showing you is what you can create for yourselves, and and I went through this briefly yesterday. But I just want to show you that is that um, so you you can um, uh, have your name and and just you know whatever you put in you can always edit it right so that's what the little pencils here are um, and so I can put in what my discipline is 
I can put my email here in, uh, my member type when I began this, when I last logged in, stuff like that. So, so there's a lot of information that we will uh, be able to <clears throat> contribute over time. Um, and the and the other thing about it, once you become a member um, of uh, of Merlot, automatically what happens is that you know we'll produce this to say, well, who else are members at your institution? So in the Cal State system, so I can click on this and I can see here's sixty two thousand other members, and some of them are students. Some of them are staff, some of them are faculty, et cetera. So you can say, who in Merlot is in the same area as me? And then I can say, what about the discipline, right? So if you wanna catalog yourself as in biology, um, and now for me, I'm in academic services, technology services. So here's 9,000 people who say they have the same interest um, uh, are th these are materials, sorry, these are materials in my interest area, right? Materials, and then here are members in my discipline. So here are other people who have cataloged themselves with the same thing. So I can talk to Sally, oh, there, I'm in there, right? Phil Moss or Takesha. So here are ways where once you become a member, then you can um, uh, find people who are just like you and we automatically create it. Now, one of the things you'll see here, there's these little cups, right? And that tells you how much of a, how many uh, contributions they have added to the collection. So, so there's a little badging that, 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 that goes on there. And, and when you contribute, um, you will be uh, getting each of you by the end of the in the internship will all have a a gold cup uh there all right then you can talk about and and these are things that 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 will fill in over time but all these are presenting your skills and knowledge so not only can you find other people but you can other people can find you because they they're going to be interested in what you're doing too all right, so so is that a kind of a kind of clear idea about um, uh, what we're going to create here for yourselves? Yes. All right. So let's. Um, so I logged out. So you know, if you all want to kind of do this along with me, um, we can uh, practice and and just you know. Just let, let me know what, when everyone is at, um, <clears throat> the website is merlot.org, www.merlot.org. So um, since I'm sharing screen, um, I, I can't really see you all. So if you can just let me know, yep, uh, I'm there, then, then, then we can uh, get started. I'm there. Okay. I'm there. I'm there. All right. Lee? I'm there. Okay. Maggie? I'm there. All right. Jennifer? I'm there. Okay. Oli? There. Okay. You're there. Good. All right. All right. So... Um, as you might guess, <laughs> the easy thing to do is if we're here to sign up, sign up, hit the sign in button. All right. So now we're at the, the member sign up page. And so here again, um, what, you know, what you would do is, you know, at a minimum, just put your first initial and then you could put your last name in. All right. And then uh, if you want to specify pronouns, um, you're welcome to do that. 
And if you want to display your pronouns to other users, you can do that too. So these are all the choices that you have. All right, now, your job title. Anybody have ideas of, of what you want to put as your job title? Can we put student? Student or? Well, now, um, are you part of the Merlot OHSL uh, Summer Rise Internship Program? And are you a, um, you know, and you can put in, um, the Merlot OHSL uh, intern, right? Because isn't that what you are? So you can do that. And remember, you can always change this afterwards. Right? Or you can put, again, it's your choice. You can do something like that. And then, and now here is, this is where you would say, I'm a student. So this is your type of um, membership. Okay. So you can select that to a student. <clears throat> and now one of the things that, that we do in Merlot is, um, and, and typically faculty who have expertise in the area can join our editorial boards for reviewing it. So, so you, since you're a student, you wouldn't be clicking this. All right. Okay, everyone good so far as, as you're making your way? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, all right, H hang on one sec. All right, sorry. All right, now now this next one is, um, uh, this is where you begin to say, what are the, what's my interest area, right? What's the discipline that I wanna work with, right? And so um, I'd say everyone pretty much is in the area of science and technology, right? And so, this is this is a process of cataloging yourself, right? So you're defining your interest area. And then so and then so uh, once you choose science and technology, then you can see, oh, here's another um discipline. It's a subdiscipline here. And then I would say, um, well, what what area am I interested in next? In I'm in science and technology. Maybe I want to say biology. Uh, some of you have talked about, in, you know, engineering. Um, there might be chemistry, who knows what, right? But, it, you know, I think it sounds, for most of you, you might kind of begin with biology. All right. So now you can see, think of it, you're cataloging, you're organizing yourself in a taxonomy, science, biology, and then I can say, well, what's next underneath there? All right, and then, oh, hang on, it's got to move some things around. And so, so once we have, um, that now we have all these different um, topic areas within biology. Okay, so you might biotech, you might do cell, molecular, um, evolutionary, medicine and health, right? So, so why don't you pick something? Um, oh, um, someone was neuroscience. Okay, so I'm going to pick that one, right? And so now you can see you have um, all these disciplines um, that that are available now. Just so you know, there's there's um, what we'll do is we will um, add 
uh, other interest areas too, right? So, and now what I'm gonna show you here is, you're also interested in health sciences, right? And notice here in health sciences, we have a whole section about cancer. Genetics and infectious diseases, right? So you can see how, and, and we got a lot in health sciences and there's stuff in nursing, mental health, right? We got um, public health, um, all types of um, kind of disciplines here. So I'm gonna do cancer, right? And then I can say in cancer, Am I the biology, cancer and pregnancy, cancer patient education, genesis of cancer, right? Uh, complications, uh, specific cancer. So maybe I want to say, oh, maybe, let, let me see. I'm interested in some specific cancers. And now here's a whole list. All the different types of cancers that are out there. All right, so um, so was this helpful folks for you to, um, you know, let's say I'm, I'm interested in um, adult T-cell leukemia lymphoma, and then I can put that in there. So- I have a question. Yep, okay, yep ask questions. Okay, so for the sake of listing interests, would it be better if they're more closely related or like, you know, if you put something that's too spread out, would that sort of confuse the people you're trying to contact or do you have like a specific preference about that? Yeah, you know, it. I think so. So just so you know, um, when um, and let's just take, you know, um, this this line right here where I have, you know, down to a very specific cancer. Um, just to know you, you have also categorized yourself at the top levels too. So it's not just the details, but it's also all these other things up here. So, um, so you have that opportunity to talk at more abstract levels and then more detail levels. Now at this stage, my suggestion would be, why don't you start off at the more general levels, right? So if you want to just say, you know, I, I want to stop at, you know, cancer itself, and then I can stop right there, right? So I can be be general, right? Um, and then you can go in later on and say, oh, you know what? After the, you know, the first two weeks, I can see I'm really interested in cancer education. I'm just making stuff up, right? So, and, and then, then I can go in and say, oh, or I'm interested in cancer in the elderly, right? Or cancer pathologies, whatever it might be. Then you can um, develop your, your profile and change it as you develop your interest areas. Okay, was that helpful? Yes, very helpful, thank you. Okay. Now, the other thing here, you know, I'll say too is you might say, well, because many of you are talking about engineering too. So you might say, okay, let me, I can add another one, science and technology we have in here. And then I can say, all right, uh, I want to do some stuff in engineering. And then I can say, oh, let me see. Uh, what I might want to do, biomedical engineering. All right. So you can have many interests and um, you can present your profile in this way. Okay. All right. So ha has everyone um, uh, put in their disciplines? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Lee? yes. Okay, Maggie. Great. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, so let let, uh, let me ask. So, so George, um, what what did you put in for yours? 
I said bi biotechnology and bioinformatics, health sciences, cancer, biochemistry, and biophysics, and molecular biology. Right. Lots of interest, right? And then one of the things you'll find, what you'll be able to do is very quickly on your profile, you, you say, oh, I want to see materials in biotech and informatics. Click. And then just those materials will then show up in, on a hit list for you. Okay. So these are some of the fun things by knowing who you are, you then can really easily find materials for your, for your interests. Okay. And so th these are some of the tricks uh, that, that you can use Merlot to make your life a little easier here. Okay. Now here is uh, the next part is affiliation. And um, this is where, you know, as, as a student, you can say you're in education and uh, right now you're in high school. Um, some of you are also doing so, George. If I remember, you're you're also in um, a, a college enrollment, so you could put higher ed. And I'll just give that. Uh, well, here, let, let me do the high school first, right? And then, then you say, okay, what country am I in? United States. Um, and you're in Maryland. And then you can type in the name of your school right here. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, and if anyone is also in um, taking college classes, so you can say I'm in higher ed. And then, then you could say, well, what type of college are you in? Community, technical, that's two years um, or the four year grad, right? And George, which one are you uh, going to? I'm going to Montgomery College. High school students can only go to Montgomery College for the okay. early college. All right, no problem. And so here then we go United States. We go to um, Maryland. And then we have the whole list. Here we go, Montgomery College, bingo, all right? All right, and um, okay, and any questions so far? Everyone got your affiliation all set up? Yes, yes. Yep. All right. Okay, how about anybody not have it done yet? All right. Okay, now here you can put the email and um, and what uh, Davida asked uh, not to, for you not to check this box yet, you know. Um, if you wanna do it after the program, that's okay, you know, that's up to you. Um, but um, for within this summarized uh, program, um, she wants to make sure we protect your privacy. Um, so don't display the email address there at this point. All right. You can put your password in. Um, and, you know, like all things, there are different uh, requirements there. So pop that in there. Wait, I'm sorry, one more time. You said we could use our own email, but don't display it? Correct. Okay, thank you. All right. So what I'm going to go through next is um, what's called the acceptable use policy. All right. Now, a lot of you, you know, we all 
you know, have to click on, I agree to these conditions and stuff. And you, you know, you never read it, but I, I'm just going to kind of go through here just so you know um, what you are signing into. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, in the acceptable use policy. All right. Um, we basically say um, that you basically need to behave properly. Otherwise, we can um, uh, kick you out of the community. All right. So, so that's this this um, base one here. All right. And um, and basically, we're saying, listen, it's free to use. Um, it's a collaborative environment, um, and um, respect other people, communicate, um, and and there are basically laws. Um, for you to comply with copyright. Um, so you can't kind of find materials that um, are have owned and are copyrighted by other people and abuse those rights. Um, so that's, you know, um, what this says here too. And then basically, um, what are violations, right? So if you... Um, kind of um, spam the community with stuff, right? Uh, sending large volumes of unsolicited mail. Um, you try to harm minors in any way. Um, <clears throat> you, um, you know, you use people's information with without proper authorization. You're reselling what we're doing. So these are just things that um, you, uh, uh, you can't use fraudulent, materials, stuff along those lines. So, so there's a bunch of these things, um, any inappropriate content, um, vulgar, obscene, adult themes and images, not good, no advertising, stuff like that. Um, and then in Merlot, um, and in, in the general open education areas, the reason I'm, I'm covering this is, um, the, the, um, what, uh, I, I'm gonna, what I'm going to talk a little bit at it about licensing, copyright, and and um, and intellectual property. So uh, whenever anyone creates something new, um, U.S. copyright law says automatically you own the rights to how other people can copy your material, okay? So that's what copyright is all about, right? You control, and, and the rights that you have is, it's called, you might have seen this, all rights reserved. So when you create something, you own the rights for other people to copy it, and you own all the rights. All the rights are reserved for you as the author, okay? Now, and, and in order to use other people's copyrighted materials, you have to get explicit permission from the author to say, can I use it? And when you're doing research, for example, um, and uh, you are, uh, let's say you there's a graph from one researcher and you want to put it in your own article that you're writing, you would have to get permission, and then you would have to describe that permission when you include it in your article, where it would say, permission granted by blah, 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 right? Whoever it is. So, so copyright is a way to control when you create things, how, how you allow other people to use it. Now, there's a, in the uh, early 2000, when digital content became um, pervasive, um, the idea about copying, right? In the old days, when everything was print, um, you know, to make a physical copy was always a very, it, it was a significant undertaking. But creating digital copies was really, you know, it's amazingly simple to be able to do that. And uh, and one of the other aspects around this is 
And you think about the internet, its whole purpose is to enable people to reuse other things and other people's works for free, right? You go onto Google, you're looking and searching and you find lots of stuff and, and you are often using that without asking permission of anybody to reuse it. So they created a set of additional licenses and these are called creative commons licenses. And it basically says, I'm gonna give you pre-permission to use materials in a certain way. So you don't have to ask me specifically um, that just that I'm gonna tell you ahead of time that, that, that you can do it. And there's a whole different set of licenses and all this other stuff like that. So, and we're not gonna go to this. I, my, my goal here is just to um, share with you that, that in the area of open education or what Merlot works in, these are areas where there are, most of the materials are free and or creatively license, Creative Commons licensed materials, all right? So I just wanted to give you, you know, that's a little mini lesson around copyright. And, and in this acceptable use policies, there's lots of things, you gotta obey the laws, um, you know, and if you wanna uh, requesting copyright or other materials that we might have, ask us, stuff like that. All right, so I, I'm not gonna, as you can see, there's lots of stuff um, you know, um, it, elements of what it means to participate in a community. And, and it all boils down to that basically respect other people's rights. Um, and, uh, and, and when you do that and you communicate with, uh, responsibly, you'll be fine. Okay. Um, any, any questions about that? All right. Was that helpful, giving a little background about copyright? Pretty helpful, I guess. All right. Because all of you are researchers, right? If you want to go into research, are you going to be generating new knowledge? Yep. Yes. And guess what? By doing that, you will then be owning the copyright for your research. Okay, and and the reason why there's copyright is that this is how people make a living by selling their materials because they have the rights to determine who can copy it, and then then you can say, all right, um, if we're going to publish this, then I can charge you for having access to the article, and that's what libraries do. That's what publishers do. So. The books you read, right? They're all copyrighted. All the journal articles, most of them are copyrighted. There are, there are other, there's what they call open access journals where all the materials have a Creative Commons license on it. So those are free and open for you to have access to, all right? So this is something that as you pursue a research career, the issue of copyright, and licensing and publication are gonna be part of your world, okay? So any any question that you have about that? Is this, is this something new for you? Did, has anybody talked about this, that you're gonna be an owner of copyright and? It's a little new, but. Just a small background based on like outside information. Right. Okay, good. So th these are things that, that you want to be thinking about. And and in the world of open education, we, tr we try to get creative commons licensed material to allow people to freely share it, right? Because if you are, um, let's say, you know, um, we're doing some work here in the US and we have people in Indonesia who want to use it, you basically have to kind of say, you have the permission to reuse it without asking me. And that allows the dissemination of knowledge 
to be much faster and broader than if you everything was controlled and and uh, and you had to ask individual permission. Okay. All right. So let's just go back to. Um, let me do the share screen again so we finish up. All right, so we did the acceptable use policy, and now we're up, all right. So click on, I've read it, and then I'm not a robot, and then you can submit. Okay. All right. So let me know, um, has, has everyone uh, signed up as a member? And, and if you're not, it's okay. Just, you know, just let me know when, when you're ready. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good? Yes. All right. All right, good. Now, now if you go back to Merlot.org, Oh, oh, here, let, let me do this, sorry. So now, um, oh, uh, and, and you, you should be getting an email. One of the things um, that, um, you know, the way the registration process is, is that um, you wanna make sure that the person who's signing up um, using this email is the person who has access to the email, okay? Um, so, um, because, you know, you, you don't want me, you know, uh, you know if I'm, um, uh, I, you know, I can pretend to be Lee. If I had Lee's um, uh, email address, I can sign up to be Lee, but, um, and using her email address, but what we do is we then send, you say, okay, are you really that person? So we send the email. Now, I don't have access to Lee's email. I just know her, her, her email address. So then that prevents me from, you know, pretending um, to be uh, to be Lee. So so all of you, you should check your email address, uh, ch check your email, and then, then you should get an email from the uh, Merlot webmaster that allows you to confirm that this in fact is you. All right, so yeah, let, let me just... Um... Uh, Lee, you, you have your hand up? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. How's it going so far? Um, they said that the email would be sent within the hour. So do you oh, know okay. like, how take? Yeah, you know, it all depends upon, you know, uh, like, you know, we, we, we get a thousand people joining. Um, so, um, all right. So, well, uh, listen. We'll, we'll be here. Let's see, another half hour. So we'll see if 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 that works. Okay. Um, but what what I'll just point out to you once once you get the validation that you're a okay, and um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang on one sec. I'm just going to email my webmaster to tell him uh, if he can speed up that process. Well, get, get, give me two secs. Oh, you know what? Let me just text him one sec. See, one advantage of um, running a business here is that I, I can have my staff do what do what I need to get done.
All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, and George, let, let me just, um, uh, J George put in the chat, um, put a question. Um, do articles about transmissible, transmissible tumors in animals go under health science or evolutionary biology since the theory is useful in developing the cure, but is not directly connected to human health? All right. So here's the thing when you, when you're thinking about um cataloging you're basically a librarian and um and george you're you're what you're doing is you're thinking about what are all the ways that this material could be used by different people and guess what you don't have to do or you do and so you can put it under health science and it could be under cancer broadly speaking and then you can also put it under biology. You could also put it under zoology, right? So there's lots of ways people will often search for material because they are coming to it, whether from a healthcare worker or from a, a research scientist or a biologist, right? So what you do is, and this is, um, and I'll just say this is an important skill for researchers is that you have to think about what you're doing as multidisciplinary because there's work in all these different disciplines that often have been siloed. And the answer to your problem can often be in a different discipline. So this is good experience when you say, I found something. Now, what are all the different ways that someone might be able to use this? Okay. Now you're not going to put it under philosophy and Heidegger, right? Um, so, um, um, so just thinking about the multiple ways that something might be used in stuff and cancer is a multidisciplinary um, topic. Okay, George. Okay, you got. Okay. It? All right. Um, and and the other thing, George. Um, what, what you can do over time is every material that you add, um, you can edit that later on, right? Uh, because you might say, oh, this is connected to this, I can add, you know. So so that you as the, you're the librarian of your own materials, you then can edit um, what you've contributed. Okay. Um, and and just you know the, the the question I'll just say um um you know avian av, you know the avian flu right does it have a connection to human health <clears throat> yes right animal transmission viruses lots of things possible here so these are some of the creative things that 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 you're thinking about and so you can allow the library to um, capture um, that 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 knowledge that you have. All right. So Lydia said she, she just got Merlot verification. That's great, Lydia. Lydia. Um, and uh, Don is is working on it right now, making sure you're all. Has it? Did anybody else get your verification yet? I also got it. Okay, Maggie. Great. I got uh, it, I got but that's because I signed up yesterday. Okay, great, George. Thanks. I got it too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I did it before too. All right, good, good, good. All right, and, and anybody not get it yet? I haven't gotten it yet. Okay. I have a question about adding on to like materials to the library. Uh-huh. If we're adding it on, how do we know that it's not been already added or like by another person? Right, well, once you type in the URL, 
Merlot automatically searches the collection and will tell you if it's already in or not. Okay. So we add open source articles and resources? All types of things, correct. Right. Okay. And um and uh and that's gonna be another topic. Um one of the things we're gonna we're gonna do is um and and th this is actually um uh the the National Institute of Health and the and the National Cancer Institute. Um mm -hmm. so um Anil has um, he's been working in those areas for many years, knows lots of people. And, and one of the problems they have is those websites, there are, you know, thousands of pages and materials. And the problem is no one can find them. Right. So one of the things that, that we're going to show you is um, basically how to explore a National Institute of Health all the resources that they have freely available. And the problem is people don't know where the stuff is, right? Because they're buried in a website 37 things down and people yeah. haven't found it. But but when you look at, okay, when you have people who say, ah, oh, this is good, this is useful, this can be educational. And then you catalog it in a way to make it easy to find. That's a huge benefit for NIH, right? And, and that's basically kind of one of the drivers for this uh, program, this internship, is you will be helping um, a federal agency make their material more usable to more people, okay? And, and in the process, you'll be able to learn a lot about, you know, cancer, you know, looking at the National Cancer Institute. There's also... Uh, other organizations out there. And, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to find a lot of this open stuff too, okay? Okay. There's Thank lots you. of stuff out there, but good question, Alice, right? All right. Uh, so Lee, just checking, did, did you get your verification yet? No, I'm still waiting. Still waiting? All right. Um. Okay. All right. I, I'm going to continue on. Just, just, um, uh, just check because uh, uh, if you didn't, if you don't get it soon, um, I'll, I'll just have Don check uh, once again. All right. So, all right. Now, uh, what you then do is, um, now that you're a member, then you log in, and and once you log in, what happens? Ugh, I hate this when this things pop up. My news. All right. Uh, if you log in, and uh, and now on my machine now it automatically knows my um, email and password. I click on Remember Me, because um, then I don't. You know, then it, it will start automatically um, keeping me logged in. And then click in login. Okay. Have you folks let let, let me know if you've logged in. I've logged in. I also logged in. All right, good, good. All right, and then as you're logged in, now everyone see your, your name up there when you're logged in? Yes. All right, then go to my profile. Okay. And and now, um, you know you can um, begin to look at editing. Um, and adding things about your um, skill areas, your interest, um, any associations, stuff like that, um, and and 
uh, like your your primary affiliation. You probably all did your your high school, and um, and here in your secondary affiliation, right? Um, you know, you can add the um, you're associated with the Merlot uh, OHSL um, Summer Rise Internship Program, right? Um, many of you are probably um, uh, doing work with other groups, right? Um, so um, I'll just give the, this example. Um, during the pandemic, um, there was a real, you know, students couldn't be in school. So uh, we got a group of professors together that could help tutor students. And so uh, it's called the pandemic professors, right? So, so there are, um, so there's our groups that you can belong to. And, uh, and, and if you, you have that, it's, it's a, just click on the little uh, pencil and then um, uh, you can type in the association name, what's your title and things like that. And so, uh, so I'm part of uh, OER resources for cancer Noise Scholars, which is an NSF program, and uh, the Merlot Africa Network. So, so that so you can add a number of um, associations um, to your profile, so someone can see all these things. All right. Is so, OHSL private or public? Uh, OHSL is a nonprofit organization, so it's a public organization. Okay, and is it based in Maryland because it asks for the state? Yes, yes, it's in Maryland. It's uh, I'm pretty sure it's a uh, Delaware. No, actually, it's Delaware if I if I remember correctly. Sorry, Delaware. And and what what I'll do is I'll I'll check with um. Uh, with Anil just to make sure. For affiliation name, do we say summarize interns? Yep. Yeah, you're in the summarize internship program. So it's you know just showing for me. Um, so Merlot, a nonprofit, public, California, U.S., and then I run a lab. You know. And so here are all the um, other organizations I'm affiliated with. Okay. So, so what this begins to do here is, if you can see, this is creating um, a bit of a, think of it as a online resume, right? a uh, e-portfolio of um, what you are doing in your career. So, um, and, uh, and, you know, you could just keep track of things and, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm looking like this, uh, you know, here's some of the topics that I teach, you know, awards, presentations, I haven't done too much, you know, I, I actually have about, I think, over 400 presentations, but I, I haven't put anything on, in here yet. Um, publications, stuff like that. So there's, there's you, you earlier in your career, these are things that um, can be uh, important for you to, to uh, capture. Um, and my, for my career, I, you know, um, I, I, I'm not trying to get a new job, all right. So, um, uh, so it it becomes less inf important for me to keep everything up to date. Uh, but, but for you, this this you know you can uh, if you're doing an application uh, to some position, you can include your the URL for your Merlot member profile as a um, as a resource for them to examine. So. Right at the top here, this this URL is um, the unique URL for your uh, for your profile. Okay, and then as the um, 
summer goes on, you will be um, submitting materials. So, um, and and so for example, here's all the materials that 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 I've submitted into the collection, um, and um, uh, and so someone can say, oh, so what did you really do? And you can say, well, just look here. Here's all the stuff um, that I did on in my internship program. Okay. Um, you can also, you know, there's and and so Merlot captures um, a lot of these um, resources um, to show what how you've accomplished things. All right. Now, um, one of the jobs, right? One of the tasks or homework assignments that you spend time doing is now um, um, flushing out the um, your your member profile. Okay. Now, um, does anyone want to do the share screen and show us what what you what you've done so far? I, I guess I, I guess I could though. Zoom is laggy on my computer, so I'd be showing my camera onto my computer with my phone. But I guess I could do it. Sure. Okay. Let me let me just spare the flip my camera. No problem. Okay. This is. There you go. All right. And then, you know, and you can see there's, you know, if you have social media and, and George, if you, um, you click on um, uh, materials in your discipline, right, there, there was that, uh, the one on the right hand side, just so if you click on that, right, so, so this, what, because we know who you are, then immediately we kind of create a collection for you, right? So you don't have to go search for stuff, right? We just kind of, so these are the tools and and I don't know if there's anyone um, in your school, um, uh, well, uh, if you put your affiliation at, as Morgan State, so George, if you click the back button um, and then go click the, the middle thing in your profile where it says members or, what, or maybe it's the first one, whatever it is, members in my, dis, uh, in my, uh, well, there's members in my discipline and there's members in my institution. How about that one? I, I just want to show people how this works. There we go. Okay. So, so by signing up, you are now connected with people who are in your institution, connected with people in your discipline, and there are materials that you say is in your interest area, All right? So this is the way, uh, and this is what, what, what I'm trying to emphasize here is this is how technology can enable you sitting in your room in Maryland to be able to have immediate easy access to these resources, whether they're people or their educational materials. Now think about someone who's, you know, in uh, Morocco and they got the they got the same phone as George has, and now they have the world of educational materials that they wouldn't have otherwise. Okay, and and what you will be doing again by you finding materials, cataloging it you are gonna be part of the community that's enabling people around the world to learn, okay? All right, thanks George, that's good. Um, anybody else wanna show theirs off? And just so you know, I'm not grading you or anything like that. Just <laughs> all right. And and 
what I'm doing a little bit here too is next Friday, July 5th, right, is one of our, um, I, if I remember, it's one of our sharing sessions. And this is where you'll be talking, you'll show off your member profile. Each of you will show off your member profile and you'll say, oh, here's some materials. Here's a one or two materials I cataloged, right? All right. So just so you know, it's not it's not a scary thing. Don't just kind of chill out on this, okay? All right. Anybody want to show off before we go off to another thing? I'm just going to do a quick highlight and then we'll finish up. Uh, I could just show briefly okay. and then like, I don't really have much added really quickly. Okay, so that, that's okay. It's like I'm doing the same thing where like, I got like a phone and I have my computer on the other one because my computer doesn't have a camera. So I'm going okay. to, uh, so, oh, should I gonna unblur my, um, my background? Give me a sec. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So I was mostly just trying to look at like the languages and the skills and interests because I feel like that's like a base level. So I'm not really sure uh, too much to add. Okay. I mean, what really qualifies as English as superior? I, I wasn't really too sure, but like, I mean, I read books. I've been speaking native. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really. That's, I mean, that's good. For... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Alexander, yes, you're superior in your English. Okay. And, and here is, you know, one of the things um, about Merlot, too, is um, we also, we use Google Translate that allows people with any language to do a reasonable translation of materials so, so they have access to it, too. And, uh, and the other thing is, if you want to contribute materials, so, um, so we, you know, we've worked in lots of different countries and, um, and we've set up the technology there's a certain way to code. Um, it's called UTF-8 um, that allows you to code any language. So people who want to, they have a Japanese keyboard that types in Japanese. Great. We, we, there's, uh, you know, all different languages, uh, Hindi, all these other stuff. So, so this again, enables um, an international community to contribute materials. All right. Okay. All right. Let's, um, so you have your, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you have your profile and now let's, what I'm just going to, again, show you um, just a little bit. You can start, you know, thinking about getting started about um, uh, looking for materials in various ways. So um, let's say I want to, look at, uh, oh, well, I, I think I did this last time, you know, DNA, okay, um, and hang on one second, let me just move something here, okay, and in Merlot, um, there, there's a few things um, that we do, um, we have uh, what's in the Merlot collection already, we search other libraries, so, um, uh and and there's lots of other libraries that that we search all at once um and so I'll just share one directory of open access journals for example and um so these are um journals that all have the creative commons license on it so let's say I want to go to um this resource I'm going I'm leaving merlot and now here's the journal art here. Yeah. So, oh, and, and here, just this stuff here. See where it says this journal uses Creative Commons CC BY or CC BY NC. So, so if you see things that look like these symbols, that's what Creative Commons um, is there. All right. And then, um, all right. So just, 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 you know, so, so you know that, um, uh, you know, c coming back to the, to the thing, and then you can go um, look at, here's the article, right? And then here's some information to look for some of these things. All right. Just, I'm, I'm just trying to give you a sense of, 
that, that you can use Merlot to find other stuff. Now, the other thing what we do is we actually, we built a unique um, Google search app um, that, um, and my joke always is if, if we typed in DNA um, from uh, on, on, on Google, let me just, or whatever I'm using here right now, Right, I got ancestry.com as the top of the hit list, and then you know, um, genetic testing, um, genetic sequencing, right? Definitions, Wikipedia, right? Now, those are not the most, um, uh, I'll say, uh, relevant things for educators. So, so what we've done here is we now have. Uh, we've selected, we've created a Google search app that search for educationally related materials. And I'll just, you know, give an example. Here's the, if you don't know, the Cold Spring Harbor Labs um, is one of the most famous um, DNA research labs. You've probably heard of Watson and Crick. Um, Watson uh, is um, one of the founders of this. And here's all these information uh, that um, uh, about from the Cold Spring Harbor Labs, and here's some research, some citizen science. Here's training materials. Here's other websites, and so by you looking through um, these uh, these materials and looking at well, what are all the student research partnerships? You can get some ideas um, that you may want to, um, begin to participate in various ways. So I'm, I'm just giving you some examples about how you can use Merlot and its tool to find materials that might be, um, um, more on target with what you are looking for. Um, the other thing too, if, if you haven't done this too, as well, um, you know, if you want to use chat GBT, Another good one is Poe, P-O-E dot org. These are your AI tools that can also help you find stuff and organize it, summarize, blah, 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 like that. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that since you got your member profile, um, once you become a member, then you're able to add materials to the collection. And, um, and, and we'll do that um, on, uh, what I think it's on Monday. Um, we have the next class, um, and I'll show you how to do that stuff, okay? All right. So um, so here today, um, what did you um, what what'd you learn today? Because one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure that the time you spend doing anything is contributing to your development. So, so spending time reflecting on, okay, what can I do now that I couldn't do before? What did I, now that I, what do I realize that I didn't realize before? Anybody wanna chime in? Um. Well, I guess first and foremost, I learned how to create a Merlot account. I love to face up. But of course, other than that, I feel like I realized that how important it was to, you know, get these resources and make sure that they're able to be accessed by everyone. Like you said, how sometimes they're like buried beneath and they can't find them or something like that. I found that was pretty interesting how even like a good resource can be lost and that um that usefulness is just gone. So I thought it was um, a nice realization there. Yeah, good, good, Alexander. And and one of the things as a researcher, um, you have to be a bit like Sherlock Holmes right? Sometimes there are these little cues that help you find uh, some materials that are buried and everyone misses. But many times those are the materials that can spark an idea of how you might want to do something different. So, so the, the research skills you're getting um, in about exploring all the, the, the digital worlds that are out there for educational content related to 
um, cancer, pathology, oncology, you know, biotech, all these things are is going to take skills. And um, and the only way you develop a skill is practice. OK, just takes practice. So so that's what our summer internship is going to help you develop that practice. So when you you know, you, you go to university, um, you'll be able to um, have that experience that allows you to move faster forward in your, you know, education and career. Okay. All right. Anybody else? We got two minutes left. Um, Jennifer, how about you? What, what, what did you get out of today? I learned that Merlot has a lot of different subjects that one can like associate themselves with. So it's not just all science and technology. They have different like other disciplines. And I found that really interesting. Yep. Great. Great. Yep. All right, Maggie. I learned that like, I guess like same thing as Jennifer that Merlot has a lot of information and then also that like they have a large variety of users. Yep. Yep. And and the disciplines and if I remember um Lee Lee you're you're interested in women's health and um and and there's a whole section on um uh gender studies, women's studies, all so and and what what I'm I'm bringing this up and of Maggie and Jennifer are saying that there are many other disciplines in which um, that are cross disciplinary. And so how do I learn across all these different things from sociological perspective or psychological perspective, all these things connect. And, and that's really what's gonna enable you to be innovative in your career, okay? All right, anyone else, Alice, Lee, Ollie? I'm just like Lydia? fascinated by this whole Merlot community and the like the resource it has because finding information is kind of hard and especially on the NIH. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a killer. Yeah. And um, yep. All right. Any other final comments? We'll call it a day. Uh, I enjoyed how easy it was to like find very specific topics like. I was able to find stuff about specific like specific cancers within like a, like a few moments rather than having to do like an entire deep dive. Right, right. Yep. And and that's that's what that's what a library does, right? <laughs> um the web um is basically an unstructured database, right? And the way it finds things, um it's complicated, I'll just say, but it's it's complex. Um, multi-dimensional heuristics that look for similarity in a statistical manner. Um, but a library allows you, because it's human beings cataloging things, it begins to help you narrow down what's relevant for what other people think are relevant, right? Uh, rather than the content driving similarity comparison. So, um, and, and that's why, and you need both, honestly. Um, so, um, and by you contributing to the library, you are bringing your knowledge and expertise and who you are, your identity into building the collection. All right. Okay, folks. Thanks again. Uh, oh, uh, yes, Lydia. Uh, sorry, I had a quick question. Yep. I was wondering if you'd be able to share the link of the website um, that you showed us earlier with the video tutorials and other like information that we could use. You bet. I, I'll send that email out again. It, it it was on one I sent earlier, but I'll send it again. Okay. And, uh, and I'll also send out, you know, the recording of this too, um, because I, I don't think we got everyone on the call today um, all the time. So we'll, uh, I'll get that to everyone too. Okay. Okay. And um, I have another question. Yep. Sure. Um, so I sent an internship agreement form to you. Yeah. Um, and I believe you mentioned that Anil and, and Kushi had to um, sign it. Yeah. Should I reach out to them again or? Uh, I, 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 I'll, um, they, yes, I, 
Um, you can nag them and I'll nag them too right after this call, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Have a great Bye. weekend too. You're welcome. Take care.